Hi, I'm going to do another example for you of how to determine the rate equation using uh, reaction mechanisms, molecularity. So here's our question. You can see we have a fast step and slow step. You might be asked, what's the rate determining step? Easy, you always go to the slow one. There's the rate determining step, the slowest step. Can't go any faster than the slowest step. Okay, I want to add this together to get the overall reaction. And you'll recall that the overall reaction is the true reaction in nature, what we observe. Um, so as we add this together, ooh, check it out. I see an oxygen and an oxygen. One's on the reactant, one's on the product. So these will cancel. When I add everything else together, we are going to get 2O3 yields 3O2. And that is what we observe in nature. <clears throat> Remember, these are called an intermediate. Um, it, an intermediate is a product is formed and then it's going to be consumed as a reactant. Um, An intermediate is not seen in the overall reaction. Okay, so the big question is, what's the rate equation? What's the rate law for this overall reaction? Okay, we're going to use our elementary steps. Remember, you always go to the slow step, rate determining step. Um, so let's look at this. Rate will equal K times the concentration of O3, ozone, raised to the first order times the concentration of O raised to the first order. Now, a little reminder, this right here is all theoretical. A chemist came up with these steps. Um, and because this is theoretical, we can assume that whatever the coefficient is, that is the order. Now, if we were given true experimental data, we'd have to mathematically determine those orders. But because this is all theoretical anyway, we make the assumption that the coefficient is the order. So a little bit different than when we're really using uh, data from experimentation. Okay, so here's my rate law. Now there is one really big issue. The intermediate is in that rate law. And when we write the rate law, we can't have any intermediates. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our fast step. Okay, now you'll recall if the fast step is before the slow step, it's going to be in equilibrium, it will reverse. <clears throat> so I can write both rate laws for this. We are going to have the forward rate law, rate equals K times the concentration of O3 to the first order, and we're going to have the reverse rate law, rate equals K times the concentration of O2 to the first order times the concentration of O to the first order. Now with equilibrium, we have equal rates. The rate at which this goes forward is the same rate at which this goes back, which means those rates are the same. I can set those two equal to each other. Why do I want to do that? I want to solve for that intermediate so that I can substitute it and get rid of it right here. So let's set these two equal to each other so we can solve for that intermediate. I'm going to have K times the concentration um, of ozone to the first order equals K times concentration of oxygen times the oxygen that's by itself. <clears throat> so let's get rid, or let's solve for this and get it all by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by K, O2, and K, O2. Now a little note, these rate constants, ultimately when I'm all finished and done, I'm going to end with some rate constant that's a number. So don't worry about those k's. At the end, we just write 1k. Yeah, this technically would be a 1 and that would be a minus 1. Don't worry about it. It's just a value of k at the very, very end. Um, so this will cancel out and then I can take this part right here and substitute it in. Um, so let's go ahead and substitute. I'm going to rewrite this. We will have rate equals k. And remember, this k and k times that just is going to be some value k. Um, so we have our ozone still, O3 to the first order. And then right here, I'm going to plug that in, substitute for the O. Um, we are going to have O3 to the one. And remember, those k's just end up buried in that value of k, all divided by the O2, which is also to the first order. So there we have it. Now it's 
a little messy. You could definitely write that. You'll get credit for it. Um, but we can clean it up. So let me clean it up for you. Uh, we will have rate equals K. It will be O3 to the second order. So one plus one for the exponents gives me two. And then this, if I bring it into the numerator, becomes a minus one times O2 to the negative one. And that would be the rate law. Notice there's no intermediates in that. So that's the rate law for this overall reaction right there. Now, I do want to share with you, one time I've seen AP um, for a multiple choice question where the student had to write the slow step and the only option for the ABCD was, um, of course, the rate law for the slow step, but it included the, um, it included the intermediate. Um, that is the rate law, yes, um, but it's not finished, it's not finished. So just wanted to give you a heads up if maybe a professor gave you a test um, and you write down the rate equation, yeah, that is the rate law, it's just not quite finished yet. Um, especially doing an FRQ, you'd be expected to substitute and replace that intermediate using the fast step above. Um, okay, very good. I have two other examples that you can watch on determining the rate equation, the rate law, by using reaction mechanisms and lots of um, building, scaffolding videos to help you understand everything that we just talked about. Have a wonderful day. I'm proud of your hard work. Thanks.